and let's talk about the emotional dynamics of conferencing. So the facilitator, you have to go to everybody involved ahead of time, right? Now, you're going into a situation where there has been harm, where there is harm. And there's harm not just to one person, there's usually harm to multiple people. And what you do is you begin to establish an emotional connection with the various people there. Might be negative, but you're establishing a connection, which begins to alter the distortion in the central blueprint where people have uh, 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 maximized the inhibition of affect. You're asking people, look, let, come share your affect. Come be a part of this process. Uh, and, you know, because I'm here talking to you about it, it's, it's, go it's going to be a mutual thing that's going to take place. And your friends are going to come, and your family's going to come, and uh, your mother and your father are going to come. And even though everybody may fear what the heck's going to happen once the conference begins, the connection triggers a bit of a reduction in fear and shame because someone in power is showing an interest. Someone in power is trying to put some things back together and is making it clear that that's what their mission is. It's a novel situation, a conference, uh, uh, for, for almost everybody involved. Uh, and so that triggers, because of novelty, a certain amount of interest. But participants usually carry a fair amount of disgust and dismell and anger into the conference or the meeting uh, that makes the affective tone negative to start with. We've got more negative affect than positive, right? Okay. Face-to-face -face contact, of course, increases shame and fear of shame, especially because of our socialization scripts, which A, say we're not supposed to show affect so when I go there and I'm really upset, what am I going to say? Am I really going to be able to say anything? And people are going to see me. People are going to see uh, uh, my reactions. And so the intensity of both positive and negative affect is increased by the, the process of conferencing. And uh, everyone's scripts are challenged. And it's a little more powerful than trying to put on your left sock tomorrow first, Jeff. I've been running an experiment for the past six decades, uh, I, I reached a Medicare age in the States yesterday. I have my card to prove it. Um, and for those six decades, I've been running an experiment. Has anybody here not been on an airplane with a crying baby? My experiment is a success. <laughs> because each affect is an analog of the pattern of its stimulus, and it's then amplified, and the response is an analog of the stimulus, then all of our responses are another stimulus of the same affect. Ah, 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 of the crying baby, and next thing you know, we're in distress, aren't we? Okay? So this is called affective resonance. Responses are stimuli and trigger the same affect in the observer. There is basically a biologically mediated uh, 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 blueprint, Tompkins called it actually an image, that runs everything that happens with humans. This is called the central blueprint, uh, and it's the motivational wiring diagram uh, that says basically because of this, we want to maximize positive affect, minimize negative affect, minimize the inhibition of affect, in other words, be aware. We want to maximize our power to do one through three. But this, di this, this blueprint runs all of us, OK? This is no simple pleasure pain business, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, a balancing that has to go on. And a mental and emotional health of individuals, pairs, families, communities is maintained when the four rules of the central blueprint are followed in a balanced pattern. If you get too far off to just maximizing positive affect because something is uh, causing you trouble, or you get too far off and I just got to minimize negative affect and you never go out of the house because something is causing you trouble, uh, then you're out of balance. 
Situations that force the rules of the central blueprint to be violated in any way produce harm because they are in utter conflict with our wiring. And our wiring runs every other part of our body. So we develop these scripts run by the rules of the central blueprint that motivate us to desire emotional connection with people. The most primitive thing that every single one of you wants is you want relief from negative affect from the people around you. And the second most primitive thing is you want positive affect and enjoyment in the relationships with you. Basic bottom line. 